Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about defining gross domestic product, otherwise known as GDP. So this video is just part one in a series of videos that I'll do on GDP. There will be a few videos in the series because it's a pretty big topic, but in this video we're really just starting from the beginning. Right, so we're going to define GDP as the market value of the final goods and services produced within a country during a given time period, so usually quarterly or yearly. So intuitively, GDP is really about measuring economic activity, how much is produced. And it's worth just thinking about each of the parts of our definition here in turn. So just starting from the top of the list here, when we say the market value, we mean that when we calculate GDP, we're going to use the price that the good is sold at in the market to essentially weight the amount of goods and services that we produce. And one way to think about why we do this is to ask the question, when we calculate GDP, can we simply add up how many things that our economy produces, so the quantity that we produce, and take this as an indication of how big or small our economy is? And actually, we can't do this. This will lead to weird results. So let's compare, for instance, country A that makes 24 cups of coffee to country B that makes three cars. If we only take into consideration the number of goods, it looks like country A is more productive than country B because 24 is greater than three. But that can't be correct, right? Because we're not taking into consideration the fact that making a car is somehow a bigger deal than making a cup of coffee. So we weight the number of goods and services that we produce by the market price. And in that way, we're including a consideration of the valuation of the good or service. So in our example here, let's say that the price of a cup of coffee was $5. So then if country A was only producing 24 cups of coffee and nothing else, then their GDP would be 24 times five, so 120. Now for country B, if they were only producing three cars and nothing else, and let's say the price of each car was 10,000, then their GDP would be three times 10,000, so 30,000. So including the market price in our calculation is giving us a better reflection of the value of production. And indeed, once we do this, we see under this measure that you know, country B's production is greater than country A's, 30,000 is greater than uh, 120. Now, if our country makes more than one uh, good or service, we're just going to sum up the market value over each of the goods and services that we produce. So as an example, if we had a table like this here on your screen here, uh, that is illustrative of the productive output for, we have three goods here. So we have carrots, bicycles, and t-shirts. Now the second column will be the quantity that's produced. And the third column is the market price per unit. What we would do to find GDP is just multiply the quantity by the price for each of our goods. So we produce 20 carrots, we value them at $2 each, so that's 20 times two is 40. We produce 10 bicycles and they're valued at $15 each, so the total value is 10 times 15, 150. And we produce eight t-shirts and they're $12 each, uh, so that's eight times 12 is 96. So summing up, we get 40 plus 150 plus 96 is 286 in total. So that will be the GDP uh, for this country if the table represented their production. So that's the inclusion of the market value in our definition. Uh, we still have to answer the question of which goods and services do we count in GDP though? And actually, if you can see the second point, we're only going to count what we call final goods and services. Now to understand why we just need to distinguish between two concepts, intermediate versus final goods and services. So intermediate goods and services will be those goods and services that are used as inputs in the production of other goods and services in the domestic economy, whilst final goods and services are not. They will be at the end point of the productive process, again, in the domestic economy. So when I say domestic economy, I just mean the economy or the country that we're calculating the GDP for. And the point of this is that we don't want to double count what is produced in the economy. Now to give an example to illustrate, let's say we had a farm who produces some eggs, a restaurant buys $2 worth of eggs from the farm and they use those eggs in the production of an omelet, which they sell for $8. 
We also have a house who buys $3 worth of eggs from the farm, which they just consume. Now, in this case, if we think about the eggs that turn into the omelet, the omelet is the final good and the eggs that make the omelet, they're an intermediate good because they're being used in the production of something else. Now, the eggs that go to the household, they're a final good because they're not being used to make any other further good or service. And we really just want to take the value of the final goods to count towards GDP. So that would be the omelet and the eggs that go to the household. We don't count the $2 worth of eggs that the restaurant buys because the value of these eggs are already contained within the $8 price of the omelet. If we include the $2 of eggs that the restaurant buys in our GDP as well as the $8, this would be double counting the value of the eggs in our calculations. Now, I should note here that when I defined intermediate and final goods, I was careful to include that we're only thinking about the productive process in the domestic economy. Now, I did this because it's reasonable to suggest and countries do export goods and services, which are then used in the production of other goods and services, but in other countries. So they're kind of intermediate goods in some sense in that they used to make other goods and services. Domestically, they're really just final goods. They're at the end point of the productive process in the domestic economy. They should definitely count towards GDP. Uh, they're definitely productivity and economic activity that should be noted and counted towards that, the country, the domestic country. So even though they might be intermediate goods in, in some sense for, for the overseas economies, uh, they are final goods for the domestic economy. Right, so that's final and intermediate goods and the problem of double counting. Now, when we talk about within a country, what we need to know here is that what matters for GDP is where our final goods and services are produced, not the citizenship of the producer. So if someone, for instance, who's a citizen of Spain comes to Australia and sets up a factory where they make shoes, the value of that production goes to Australia's GDP because the production is happening in Australia, not to Spain's GDP, even though the owner of the shop is a Spanish citizen. Lastly, the time stuff I think is pretty self-explanatory. We're often most interested in yearly GDP figures. In practice, we often get estimates of yearly GDP using quarterly information. So that's really our definition of GDP, the market value of the final goods and services produced within a country during a given time period. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, there is a lot more to talk about here, but the issues that I've spoken about in this video that the definition kind of brings up, they're a really good starting point from where we can understand all these other further topics in GDP. So one issue, for instance, that comes up a bit is around this market price that I spoke about before. So for instance, if we're looking at GDP over time, we immediately have a question of which price do we use since prices also change over time. What happens also if a good or service is produced but not traded in a typical market, so there's no market price, or if we have good reason to believe that the price is not indicative of the value of production. Another thing that will come up again is the distinction between intermediate and final goods and services. This distinction is important for understanding the methods that we use to measure GDP. And so I'll just go through it quickly. There are three ways we measure GDP in practice. We can sum up total expenditure. That's the expenditure approach. We can add up total income. That's the income approach. Or we can add up the value of the amount produced at each stage of the production process of a final good or service. This is the value added approach. Now, in the next video in this series, I'm just going to go through the logic behind why these three ways of measuring GDP, why we're going to get to the same GDP at the, at the end. So why it's the case that expenditure is equal to income is equal to production. So this is a central idea in macroeconomics. It's good to kind of understand. All right, that's it. I hope that the video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys are having a great day.